guys and welcome this is our podcast this is episode number 22 if you're listening and following along at home or if you're like me it's uh wednesday morning and you're driving to work and uh, you just noticed that you had a new notification on your phone that says hey you have a new podcast so i excitedly open it up and listen to this dribble so thank you very much for uh, tuning Dribble. in. Dribble? <laughs> Dribble? There's well, a V in there. Drool. If it was said, there'd be Drool. dribbles. 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 Um, so thank you very much for joining us. My name is Todd Ansich. I'm your host again. With me is Josh Zubis Brickus. Hey, that's me. <laughs> I like how you took your voice up an octave there. Yeah. 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 So if you're messing around with yeah. the treble in your vehicle, yeah, leave, leave it alone. About it. Leave yeah, it alone. There you go. Yeah. And Joe Kimson from Flats Radius Paintball. Greetings. How are you? Very nice. Did now, you say Flats Radius? I Flats did. Radius. Flats Radius. That's uh, well. We won't get into how that came about, but we have. I'll tell um, you later. <laughs> we have um, Seb. Hello. How are you? Uh, good. You? Good. Seb's doing our all of our audio this evening, as well as asking some of our questions. And we it, have Matt the pr- the crypt pr- pushing all the buttons tonight. Yeah, you really had a but, difficult oh, time no, getting I, that I did. I need some more wine to loosen up the tongue. And uh, then, speaking of loosen, loose tongues, Dusty. Yeah. Thank you for being back in the program Dustin again. Dustin Schnitzel. Yeah, sure. Glad to be here. Yeah, now we're all to excited the ladies, because... he's uh, known as Trusty Rusty. <laughs> Wait, what? Rusty from... <laughs> <laughs> nice. So, guys, we uh, we have lots of your questions loaded in the program. We're watching the chat form. If you have any questions, get it up in the chat. Or you can hit us up on Behind the Bunker on Twitter. Also, our Skype is live. And uh, if we feel so inclined, we may take some of your Skype calls tonight. We are at Behind the Bunker on Skype. If you're not Skype. already on our address book, hit us up. Um so we just finished off having uh, what would officially be in our neck of the woods the first outdoor weekend of the season. We had a recreational game on Saturday, and we had a paint fest game on Sunday, which we hosted that had free in, free entry, uh, free rentals, cheap paint, just to get people to remember that there's paintball outside. But we had demo, we had product demos from. Empire, we had a Defender, a Vanquish, a Cocker, a TM-15, Splatmaster. Then we had the Eclipse out with an Etha. Then we had Ty... I don't think Tiberius had anything yet because they're working on it. But the guys from Millsig came up with the m 17s and a bunch of different variants. Nice. Very cool. And don't forget we the had Fellers Tip, from Kill House. Tipman up as well. Tipman had um, several different markers out. X7 Phenom, FT12, A5, TPX, and yeah. then the Kill House guys had all their variants as yeah, well. Yeah, it was great. Cool. So thanks to those guys that came out. Thanks uh, thanks for listening tonight, and thanks you, uh, thank you for all that help. So that uh, got us all in the mood. We, uh, we're now in, uh, in a new groove, and we're, we're excited for the Paint season. Paintball mode. <laughs> now, I will apologize for those of you that follow us on, uh, on uh, iTunes and Podomatic under the podcast. We do not have Jamie King on tonight. Unfortunately, he is not feeling well. He um, uh, he, he ate is, too many cupcakes. He choked on a poem. <laughs> I, believe, I believe he's got the bronchitis. Ain't nobody got time for that. <laughs> well, apparently he does. So he's not in tonight. Thus, no poem tonight. So half the chat form is going to be screaming, <clears throat> yay, no poem. And the other half are going to be screaming, what? That's the best part of the show. Oh, Lord, I've been getting people give me emails saying they love it. And other people just hate it. I've never had something on our show that's been both so loved and despised from both ends of the spectrum. But what about Snarky? Ah, uh, that's true. Snarky was pretty uh, upset some people. That's for sure. Um, so again, we got tons of your questions to get to tonight. Um, who's reading them over there? Is Dusty getting them? Question time. I have them at the moment. Let's go. Sure. All Shoot, right, man. Airboy, who is in the chats, wondering what are your suggestions about starting a new paintball team? Sorry, who's that from? Airboy. Airboy. He's in the chat right now. Okay, very cool. He just asked that question. And what was his question? 
<laughs> Hi, I wasn't doing um, this is behind the bunker. We do a live <laughs> podcast that you're involved in. Sorry. <laughs> you're actually sitting here. Sorry. Not only am I. Uh, yeah, I'm, at, I'm pretending I'm at a drive through window and I, it was my time to order. And you're oblivious. So I missed and, it. And you're telling us you. Did, so did he's wondering, before. what are your suggestions about starting a paintball team? Don't. What kind of team? Speedball? There's so many already. Speedball or a scenario team? We're not going to call it woods ball because that doesn't exist. Yeah. You, you know what? If you're going to start a – I'll start Touché. with a speedball team just because I've had experience with that. Um, whatever you do with with your team, make sure you, you bring people on that are uh, people that you would want to be around. If someone annoys you in the least, don't bring them in. Um, you're going to be spending an awful lot of time with these people traveling, hotels, um, you know, uh, paintball matches. So make sure it's people that you, you like to be around. Even if they may not have the best skill at the time, that comes with time. Make sure that you're a happy camper because uh, guys that get along on a team will stay together longer, and that's that's what what makes a good team. Oh, uh, there are currently four of us on the team, and since we are only 16 of 17, we don't – oh, we're 16 or 17? Yeah. Okay. Uh, we don't want people much older or younger. You That's know what? Kind of you got to, you know, Airboy. You got to open up your your horizons there because uh, you guys are great at sixteen and seventeen, and that's great. But if you bring a couple of guys that maybe are a little older that have been around the circuit a little bit more, have some experience. Ew, and it's Magfed. <laughs> they might give you guys some uh, some, some, some tips, um, things that you guys have never seen before that will speed up your training. If you had, you know, especially with any team I've ever been on, if we bring in a new player from another camp. First thing we usually do is talk to them him. and find out, you know, <laughs> what sort of skills do they bring to the yeah, team? What sort of things do they do that we maybe didn't that we should look at? And we learn a few things and maybe adopt some of the things that they did. It also takes a lot of time and patience. That's true. Yeah. If you, if you want to go the road of being, you know, a sponsored team and all that, then you have to build up a name for yourselves. You have to play frequent games and you have to be willing to do stuff at your local field and, and continue on through that. But. Yeah, and I've got a lot of work ahead of you. I'm not sure who brought Fisher 22 of the four in the chat forum, right? And girlfriends. Uh, make sure whoever you bring onto the team doesn't have girlfriends. Doesn't make have sure they don't want one. They don't of girlfriends. Yeah, yeah, because <laughs> as soon as they get a girlfriend, they disappear. They're gone. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah, very <laughs> good. So, <laughs> yeah. so just funny. be open minded for sure. Just be open minded. It's like sad when he's playing Titanfall. Hang on, my girlfriend's there. I gotta go. That's guys. why the village people <laughs> lasted so long. She will <laughs> kick you in the nuts next time. She, she probably will. Yes, I will give. Man, everybody's bashing the Magfed, eh? C four explosives. Magfeds have <laughs> girlfriends. What they should. <laughs> Silly. Well, you don't hey, ever hear an airsofter with a girlfriend, right? Magfed's <laughs> just a, Magfed's another genre of paintball, guys. It's not going to go anywhere. Yep. It's here to stay, and and it's going to coexist. You're going to have speedball in the speedball fields. You're going to have recreational paintball in the recreational field. You're going to have scenario guys doing scenario stuff. You're going to have airsoft on one field, and you're going to have Magfed guys doing their thing. Low cap games. You, you will, Joe, but it's a gateway st- to stupidity known as the first strike round. <laughs> <laughs> well, you can would, have... Would you adopt Magfed... More if you knew that the people playing MagFed were not using first strikes. Absolutely. Okay. Um, no clue 119 in the chat says that, uh, Airboy, you need to find someone rich to pay all your bills. That's another thing when you're making a team. Make sure they all have jobs or the ability to keep a job. Yeah, or cars. Sh- or yeah. sugar cars. mama. Go yeah. find a MILF. <laughs> so, so get a rich girlfriend. Yeah. Yeah, but then you won't be allowed or to Or a boyfriend play. if that's your thing, you know. That, dude. Well, not that there's anything wrong with that. Mm. All right. Just don't tell Next anyone. question, Dusty. <laughs> uh, Eddie, he emailed us in. He's saying, what did he say? I've been playing for three years. Since then, I must have been put, uh, spent a good eight grand in the sport between playing and purchasing my DM12 and DAM. And I'm constantly purchasing things uh, every time I get on companies' websites. Who else has this problem? <laughs> Yeah, you're talking to seven people that have that problem right now in the Shouldn't studio. Shouldn't have bought a damn. Six it's people, a big rather. Y- you know what? Paintball is, uh, I- if you like toys, y- you- paintball is a great sport for you. I mean, uh, I also, you know, Seb and I both are audiophiles. Seb. And, and uh, we, uh, we're constantly buying cameras and microphones and all kinds of stuff. So, you know, just because you're doing it in paintball 
doesn't mean yeah, you necessarily you were, have a problem. In other sports, if you were in <laughs> motocross, you'd probably buy a new bike every year. And you'd buy all kinds of equipment every year. And if you were a skier, you'd probably maybe buy skis every couple of years, new boots, bindings, new gear. It's just like any sport, golf, hockey, whatever. It's yeah. just it's a sport you've chosen to sport. Yeah, I'm a big advocate of buying new things until you find what's right. But once you find something that, that, you, that you like, um, stick with it for a little while so you can learn on it. Or hoard it. Um, Go straight up to the it. top. Yes, to hoarding. Buy yourself a resurrection autococker. <laughs> the uh, uh, the I guess the the resurgent of the the Revy. The revolution. I yep. have a prophecy on mine. Get yourself you could... the brand new ninja tank, and that, it, uh, you just yeah, yeah, that's all you need. Now you guys brought up a good point. And batteries. Um, when you purchase gear, one of the things. Now I know not everybody can do this because everyone's on a budget, but if you can at all help it. Never, ever sell any of your gear. And I say that because there are so many guns out there that I, well, not there's two of them that I let go and I want them back. And um, I wish, you know, I, I've never sold any of my goggles. Oh, I've I never exactly sold you anything. You there's mean. a couple guns that I wish <laughs> I had that uh, that I sold. Yeah. Well, yeah. yeah. Like I sold what? Mark 1 Uzi, my, my oh. green Bushmaster, Bushmaster with a matching... A uh, seven ounce tank and a lever quick change, and then I had a Model eighty five. I should have kept. So if you can't afford to do that, then just really consider getting rid of your equipment when you do. If you actually are going to not like it, if you're getting rid of it because you ultimately hate it, then fine. But if you like it and you just want something better, you're getting rid of it for the wrong reason. Yeah, you, you can just go ahead and sell your evil omen now. No, <laughs> blam. <laughs> All well, right. they, I'm sorry. There are some people out there who collect classic failures. Yeah, yeah. Oh, I have an omen. That's true. God has an omen. It's like the women that date Dusty, right? <laughs> oh, oh, ouch. I'm just kidding. Cure Bob had an interesting <laughs> question. How do you, pers- kind of in the same vein, how do you persuade a field owner to lean towards mag or pump days? Why not, what if you- your field owner has more than one playing field, most fields have a couple anyway, Let let the alternate the fields have one yeah. go on one go off or whatever. what you need to do kirby bob is go out get five or six of your friends go to the field and say can we can we play and he'll see you guys there as a tangible market and tell him that we're going to start inviting more people and uh, once you start bringing some numbers he will put you up there in his uh, priority list where are you located cure bob or curvy bob as todd called you i i, I read it as curb e bob kirby bob kirby bob kirby bob's yeah all right. <clears throat> Carlos, Jeez. Omen backwards is Nemo. <laughs> Thank you, Carlos, Carlos. Juan, Carlos, kitty, yes. kitty, kitty. Both their mothers died. All right. Do we have any more questions? Yeah. Brent Pritchard wonders, dwell. Do you leave it alone or do you play around with it? I really don't want to dwell on that. We'll go on to a different question. It depends. <laughs> it, it, it depends. This question's for Seb, but I think, Seb. It, I, I think Seb. we should ask Sam. Seb. Sam. Do you, do you change the dwell? Uh, I would suggest leaving the dwell as is yep. because uh, you'll have to deal with a uh, first shot drop off, which is you always see the pros taking a couple of shots before they uh, do their break off. Uh, that's because uh, their dwell is very low. So you don't want to dwell too much in the dwelling yeah. settings. You know what? The dwell is in your gun set at the factory for what it should be. And if it was supposed to be changed, it would be changed for that. If your gun is not working properly, reset the dwell to what it's supposed to be. Uh, there are very few guns out there where you can actually take it out of the box, change the dwell, you know, to customize it for it, for it to actually work properly. I, 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 I mean, set my 98 dwell on my Tipman 98 and it worked good. Let me put it this way. You will run out of paint before you run out of air, especially with that new Ninja Tank that's super light. Is this forty five forty five or sixty eight forty five? It's a sixty eight forty five, but in the forty five forty five container, it's pretty small. That's Zuby, he likes it. Yes. I was ramping. I'm still <laughs> I'm still waiting for Joe to Well, know you know what? I'm waiting in. on them to be T C approved. It's got okay. Jack if we can move to the States and I'll get all of them that you want. But if you want to have one here that you can fill. Yeah, I know. Well don't touch your dwell. Leave it alone. You're no, fine. Okay. You're fine. Don't touch it. Yeah. Don't touch it. No touchy. Next. The bada touch. <laughs> All right. The next question I have is from S P E C T E R. Spay Sitter. I don't know how to say that. Uh, as far as air tank safety goes, how do you get over a mild fear? Uh, recently occurring fear of tank related accidents. Have you ever seen a tank related accident? 
he, Arnold Schwarzenegger has this video that he drives over stuff with the tank. Yeah. Joe put the wrong O ring in my tank one time. Did he? Yeah. Did? Like a fill nipple O ring. Fill nipple. He, here's the thing. Okay. <laughs> Tanks are very dangerous. They are filled with high pressure that? air, and they are explosive if if they're if they're messed around with. Making tanks. However, sounds. however, if you actually take a cross section of a tank and see how thick the walls are, you shouldn't have to. We, you should be worried about it exploding. The safety valves on your gun are set uh, at a safe level, so if your reg sticks or if you overfill your your tank. It's going to blow off those safety rupture discs and not actually shoot anything out. It's just going to shoot the air out. It'll be loud. It'll scare you, but it's not going to harm you. Um, the threads on your reg that are screwed into your tank, if you start backing it out slowly and unscrewing it, you'll notice that about halfway, um, there's a little notch cut in it so that if the tank and reg starts to separate, uh, when it gets about a quarter of the way out, it starts Pressure evacuating relief. air so it won't turn into a projectile. Um, so there's so many safety facets on that. Now, I'm not going to say that there's never been an accident in tank history, but if you do not mess with your tank, you let a, a certified airsmith deal with it, and you purchase a new tank and fill it with a proper fill station, you should never, ever, ever have a problem. Um, I'm and, saying should, as in I can't and, say you're and, never going to have a any problem. Any tank but, you buy will have a hydro test date on it, much like a propane cylinder you use for barbecuing or cookouts. That's an American term. Yeah. Um, they expire, and they just have to be rehydrated, and you can usually do that at a fire station, a fire um, extinguisher f- facility. Yep. yep. Have you seen the video of the guy that dives into the snake no. and blows his tank off? Yeah. Oh. All right, so forget right. everything I said. Dusty thanks, just now thanks, made you thanks, nervous. Dusty. Yeah, great. True. It happens. Killjoy. We were sitting on the couch and we had such. We, yeah, we were getting somewhere with our patient there, but. All uh, right, whatever. Let's get another question going. It's a lot more. HPA is a lot more stable than CO2. Yeah. Agreed. Sure. Yep. And proven, sir. Yep. Technologies. All right. Uh, why do you think paintball is getting so much smaller, like the actual paintballs in general? Maybe you're just getting bigger. <clears throat> Never think of that? I don't know. Maybe. maybe put down the snack bowl at the end of the day. <laughs> I, wow. I don't know. <laughs> Is this right, Dusty? <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> I, I believe it's manufacturing costs. If they can shave a, a thou or two thou off the size of a paintball, when they start making, when you're talking billions and billions of paintballs, yeah. They're saving a lot of money. Just think if your main your main staple in life is making Rice Krispie squares. And if you made Rice Krispie squares for your entire life, seven days a week, 24 hours a day, and if you each tray of Rice Krispie squares, you kept out two or three Rice Krispies, how many Rice Krispies you'd have at the end? Seven. Think of your saving. Matt Bishop wrote, uh, he added in on the comments, uh, cheaper to produce, packs into smaller boxes, which are cheaper to buy. Fits more boxes on a truck, which is cheaper to ship. Okay, but you got to realize you're still dealing with six, eight cal roughly, even though they're making the paintball smaller. We're talking mic- microns. We're talking small, very hard to measure the sizes. One one you're not hundredth con- of an inch. Yeah, yeah that's so not micron. One, one hundredth of an inch. Like two or three Rice Krispie squares per Rice Krispie tray. What? No, I wouldn't even say that. <laughs> no, that's not Rice Krispies, I would hungry. say. Rice Krispies, yes, the yeah. unit. Yeah. Oh, unit of crispy. Like a snap or a crackle. You know? not, yes, not. snap, crackle, or a pop. Okay. Is it, is now the, that you've said that, Joel, but coming from a manufacturing background, I find it very, very hard to believe the reason why that's happening is a cost thing. I can't see them sitting in a, in a marketing meeting or a production meeting and going, you know, if we shaved one one hundredth off the shell size on our paintball, we're going to save $57 this year. I See, highly doubt I think the conversation the actually did happen, but they used uh, the increments of measurements of Krispies. <laughs> so it's one one crispieth. <laughs> if, if anything, I would venture to say that somehow, somewhere, the formula for the shell that they're using changed. No, they used dyes. Well, yeah, but you think to remake an entire die... One one thousandth of an inch well, smaller. They wear yeah. out. You're talking. Yeah, it would make it bigger, would it not? Yeah. Making it, it bigger out. is gonna. Uh, yeah, it's gonna make it bigger. It's I, make it I would predict that they're using the same six eight cal um, molds. They're just maybe not filling it as. They're not topping up as much as it maybe once was. Maybe it's and, because we're of the talking, exchange on the dollar. We're talking minuscule amounts here, right? I, I, if if anything, I would say that. 
the speed in which they're manufacturing them has increased. Yep. And their machinery is not keeping up with the production levels they're talking about. Yes, buddy. And I think that's what's how I anyways. Yeah. My background tells me that's exactly you got me at Woods Ball. <laughs> <laughs> All right. All right. I have a question here from Corey Verbus. What's the purpose of the porting on the barrel? Is it just for sound control or does it make it easier on the paint? Can or we, is there any other reason? Can it, Can you guys, would you guys mind if we leave this question? We'll come back to it next week. I had a barrel expert um, set to call in tonight to deal with that question. And I think he's going to come in next week instead. So let's leave that. I've got a barrel expert that's going to uh, answer that next week. Can we circle back, put a pin in it, as Matt said last week and uh, or the other week? So tune in everybody next week to listen to the barrel expert talk about porting and honing, honing and barreling yep. along. All right. Miles Saucier writes in, I have to ask the age long paintball question. Playing paintball at a younger age, it's hardest to have a job because the only time you can work is the weekends. And that's when you want to play paintball. Any advice for younger players, 12 to 18? Ooh. Well, first of all, you don't need to play paintball every Saturday and Sunday. Um, unless you want to take it up competitively in practice. Um, the other option is to um, take your Saturdays and Sundays and donate them to a paintball field, work for them, and in turn uh, turn that proceed into some paint because that, uh, that's probably the cheapest, most effective way. I don't, you, know how often, desperate for I don't know how often reps or staff at a paintball field actually get to play, though. Tuesday nights. That's true. L- many, many fields... Are rec- many fields are recognizing this fact that every people work a lot. So some fields st- will stay open later one evening. Some will open maybe a midweek game. And if there's an indoor field yeah. near you, then there. But let's open. say some kid came up to you and and wanted to know that hey, if you were going to clean the staging area in the morning and clean it up at night at the end of the day, would you donate him a bag of paint? A small bag of paint? Sure, right? Sure. If you can convince a field owner to do that, there you go. You're at the field anyways. If you go in above, have a shorter day of play, use the paint that he gives you and, and work it off that way, and you can set up a rapport and a relationship with him, that would be the best way. But that's still not answering his question. Where is the income coming from? Where's the tangible money? He wants money? money. He's got to do other stuff too, Todd. He can't just... Well, yeah, but he can sell his soul he... elsewhere. Well, let's use paintball to teach you in a very, very important lesson in life. You're going to have to work for money what? if you want to do something, period. <laughs> it's not like, – unless you're willing to sacrifice a little bit of time to have a job, you're not going to be able to play. You know, so see, sorry, so sad, but see, that's the thing, way life is. See, now next thing you're going to do is say, I'm going to need money to have a girlfriend. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you might want to start saving up for that one right now. Got a bank loan. <laughs> yeah, line it, of credit. Take like a line of credit out. Sell some organs. <laughs> yeah. But what I'm saying is work at a work at a tangible place on a Saturday and on a Sunday, go to the paintball field, donate your time and trade it in for cash and then you're win win win. It never hurts to ask. I have a really good question here from Charlie Decker. He writes in what is the best age you should start to allow and train your child to respect the sport of paintball and if they know the rules and the safety of the sport at a young age, between seven and ten, should they be allowed to participate at a local field? Splat Master Night. Splat That's exactly master. what it's for. Yeah. We have a Splat Master Night coming up Thursday yeah, night Thursday at the night. indoor from 5 is. till 9.30. Yeah. Buckets. Flaggers is indoor. Oh, Buckets of fun. I think, Buckets of fun. I think eight's a great age for Splat Master. I think anything younger than that, they're not able to hold the gun proficiently and cock them. I mean, even at eight, a lot of kids don't have the, the, the muscles for that. Um, so although you're eager to get your small people into it, I would say eight's probably the cutoff, and even eight's pretty young. There's some eight-year-olds still going on six. Um, I don't know. Eight, eight's good, but real traditional paintball, as soon as they're 10 and as soon as they're old enough to understand and, and, and have the strength to do that, I would get them out to the paintball field right away. Absolutely. Yeah. I agree. Yeah, I wish I started at 10. It wasn't invented when I was 10. <laughs> Nor was color TV. No, I'm just kidding. Oh. Uh, I'm just kidding. Maybe not. <laughs> <laughs> I don't remember. I was young, he says. Yeah, All right. I know it was. Mitchell Keel's wondering, what do you guys think? The FX adapter kit or dual wielding pistols? Hmm? Sorry, repeat the question. Dual wielding pistols or? Or what should he do? Dual wheel, dual wield pistols or FX adapter kit? 
Which one's the FX? What's an FX adapter kit? Research department. It's like the Sarge kit, but it's from Mil- uh, Milsig. It's it's like the Sarge kit. It's the only, uh, if your you're pistol do, goes into it and it makes it into a not yeah. pistol. If you're gonna do <laughs> double pistols, you can you have to make sure that you train shooting them sideways, um, like gangster style. You know what? Don't use two guns at the same time. You have a hard enough time aiming one. I don't know how you're gonna aim both shooting. Uh, I I don't know. Yeah, how do Whatever you... happened to just playing paintball? <laughs> <laughs> hey, um, why is this a yeah. thing? It depends on how egg you want to look. Yeah, um, scramble. A- egg is speedball, isn't it? It's egg. Was, nah, you it's, can look egg all you want, but to everyone that's out on the field, that yeah. Knows but if what you're running about, around with those in your egg, you, you might get egg on your face. <laughs> yeah. Do an egg white omelet um, this morning? Can uh, we get back to Kirby Bob's question in the chat? He says, uh, "I've Bob? heard of recycled paintballs. Um, what are they?" Bad idea. Now, recycled paintball, guys, there's no such thing as recycled paintballs. There's recycled shell paintballs where they take re- they take the um, leftover trimmings that has gone through the machine, grind them up again, and reuse them. That, and that, that's usually in a lower-grade paint. That's on farm, a lot of pharmaceutical companies. The, some of the paintball manufacturers take clippings from contact C capsules, Robitussin, any gelatin capsule. <laughs> And it's, vir- it's it's virgin fill. It's just been recycled and ground up, and then remelted, and it goes into a lower grade paintball. But yeah. in most case, some several manufacturers, the paint is still quite round. It's just a it's just a different shell configuration. Yeah. It's not virgin pet gel, in the, as they call it. Now, APC in the chat wants to know. He says, "Joe, can you tell us anything about the Shoreline game?" Todd, uh, can you say anything? Um, well, first of all, let's tell people what the Shoreline game is for those people that may not <clears> know. Do you want me to tell? Yeah, absolutely. Um, Shoreline, for anyone who doesn't know, Tim Barnett is Shoreline um, paintball, and he's in Britain, but he's branched from Britain into Europe, and he is probably Europe's biggest uh, promoter of scenario and big games in on in the European Union, if you will. Um, he's never ventured into the north, into the Americas, be it North or South America. So he, his first game off the British. And off the European continent is going to be on Sunday, September the 21st. It's going to be a Flag Raiders paintball in Kitchener, Ontario. And it will be a genuine shoreline game. Yeah. Now, <laughs> more information. There was a teaser poster with the date and the location announced last week. Um, and it's I believe... the shoreline one game. It's the yeah. one to go to, the one you don't want to miss, the first one. Yeah. And there'll be more information about that and a website and stuff coming very, very, very soon. So stay tuned for that. All right. A um, couple more questions to get to, Dusty. Yeah. Nick Castillo writes in, how does it make you feel when someone wipes a hit and you see it? Um, I feel the <laughs> same way I always do. Kaz, get off the field. Oh, did I say that loud? Jesus <laughs> Christ. Um, <laughs> you, you know what? It... it it, it's it's twofold. If you if you're playing in speedball and if you see a guy wipe and he gets away with it, good for him, I guess. Um, if he's playing rec ball, that's that, that's that's a pretty that's a pretty yeah, low I, thing to do. It, I mean, I would I would say to the I would I would call him on it because um, that's that's a pretty low form of uh, of cheating. Um, been, you can be cocky and say, yeah, I get to shoot him again, but it's still a pain in your side if you're if you shoot the guy, you do well. And he wipes it and continues to play. I've I mean, been playing against little kids and on their birthday party and stuff like that. I've, <laughs> yes, because I'm a paintball bully. Him and Matt have started Whatever. their own team. It's called the Newbie Hunters. <laughs> Whatever. <they've won>. Anyway, <laughs> you, you know, you, or you're not necessarily a little kid. And you're playing against somebody and you, and you hit them and you just tell them to wipe it off and keep playing because it's, it's 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 yeah yeah. That, I've done that before or 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 you know had just carry on. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> wow yeah i wonder if you'll be able to hear Dustin's that in the podcast <laughs> all right yeah. cool so we got time for a couple more questions dusty how many have we gotten through all of the questions tonight or you still have a stack i have some yeah i got quite a few good yeah. dusty that's here i'm running out of good ones but i do have a few dusty it almost looks like you're with the black black hoodie and the white background it almost looks like, you're, like your head's floating like you're you're not even a, a body it's just your head and the hat's black, too. And the hat's black. Everything's black. I miss his mustache. Back in black. Well, which one? Like, dirty stash or, like, the, when I had a nice trim goatee? Well, the oh. dirty stash was kind of nice. Yeah. All right. All right. 
Connor Baker writes in, I am six foot three and realize that bunkers are getting smaller and smaller. Do you <laughs> think eventually there will be a status quo for paintball? Also, do you prefer on turf or grass? Yeah. Um, let's answer the second question first. The second part of that question first. I, I like turf, but I prefer grass. Um, I, I like the, the, the varying terrain of the grass. I, I like how you can slide on certain parts where you need to. Corners are a little roughed up, so they're a little easier for traction you know, for running out. But there's nothing better than watching grass seeds blooming <laughs> in the spring air. The <laughs> turf just sits there and just <laughs> turf just sits there idly, and grass goes bloom, yeah. and it attracts bees. <laughs> Next one. Well, that, what's the other half of that question, Dustin? I think if um. This your problem of being six foot three and the bunkers getting smaller. That could be addressed by the paintball manufacturers making a slightly larger paintball. How would but, that help? But grass, <laughs> <laughs> but, a six eight ball. Yeah. But grass on a speedball field. By the time you play, the, you play the finals. If if you make it, not that I would know what I'm talking about here. But at the end of the weekend, that field, whatever people slide, is usually there's no more grass. There's just a mud slider. Yeah. On turf, on the other end. I would say that it's pretty equal. Like the the yes, but I've seen turf fields though to to combat that where people have slid so much that the turf has shifted, and then it becomes warbly with those little ripples and right stuff. Right when and then your you socks fall down. Anyways. Yeah. So you're right. Like a pristine a pristine grass field versus a pristine turf field. I'd still take grass over it. Um, but both fields have their problems. So the moral of the story is: every speedball field is a wasted scenario field. <laughs> Um, in answer to the question about uh, <laughs> bunkers shrinking and, and standards, there is very few standards. I was in a pool. In I was in a pool. <laughs> Bunker shrink bunkers there's shrinking, very, children there's, singing. Should have bought air ups. Yeah, there's very few standards in paintball, guys, uh, aside from the size of the, the guns and, and the, the tank ratings. I mean, everything, can't, everything changes. I mean, they can't consistently keep a rate of fire for more than a year or two before they change it. And they're changing bunker shapes every year. So it's going to be a while till you see anything standard in speedball, I hate to say it. The field sizes are standard for the most part. Yeah, but mm. they PSP changed it two years ago. They made it longer, and then they reneged and, and went back to regular standardized, size. And they've standardized the covering, be it grass, grass or turf as well. Yeah, I guess. <laughs> well, That's you don't see standard. too many gravel fields. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 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 I like cookies. I like turtles. I like bear paws. I like turtles. <laughs> bear paws I like are the turtles. best. <laughs> Next. Oh, Greg goodness. Hastings right in. He's like, when will the manufacturers, fields, etc., organize a single effort to help promote our sport? In an ideal world, that would happen, but I don't see that ever happening. I don't think so. Thank you, young Gregory Hastings. I hear he's a new up-and-coming paintball player. Maybe. Maybe. He's so, from New Jersey, yeah. isn't he? Doesn't he have a Jeep? New Jersey. <laughs> we need to get a research department on it. Greg, if you're listening, we want to know if you have a Jeep in New Jersey. I read about him in an issue of Faceful published in 2003. This guy's own video game. Or yeah. a few. I think he was oh, yeah. in the Navy. <sighs> wow, did we railroad this pretty quick? <laughs> um, looking at the time, I think we got a couple, uh, couple more minutes. Um, here's what I want to do for the next one. Um, we're Every week on the podcast, we like to uh, answer a question before it even happens. Um, last week I promised I want to give the guys in the chat, the live chat, an opportunity to submit one answer. And uh, we're going to wait till you guys get your answers in, uh, and then we'll read the question. But what, what the premise is, guys, is uh, we want you to pre-answer a question. We're not going to tell you what it is. We just want your answer and see if you've answered the right the, question. The, what will the, the, person, the person that gets the closest answer will get free entry to the t Trek Wars game at Flag Raiders on April 27th. And if you can't if you can't make it you get a um hearty handshake or a high you get a, five. We'll all wave virtual at you. high five. We'll, yes. mail, we'll mail you a hug. <laughs> <laughs> Very good. So let's hit a question up before we give the uh, the actual question away for that uh, contest. So everybody answer their question. Just or pick not. A, just pick one at random and then don't don't ask it yet. Oh, so I'm not supposed to ask? I'm confused. No, you, no they're going to answer every it's like Jeopardy. They're going to pre everyone's going to pre answer their question and they're going to type it into the yeah. into the forum. But while we're Centurion, waiting, strike him. Now, <laughs> we're while we're waiting for that question to be asked, let's ask another one cuz it takes okay. a little bit of time for the guys in the oh, live chat to go. get their no stuff. Here we go. No clues at Otto Cocker, okay? Otto Cocker. Otto Cocker. Otto Cocker. Yeah. All right, so Made let's ask aluminium. a question. 
All right. Chris Maverick yeah. writes in, I have a question for next week's show. What qualities make paintball personalities appealing to you? Their videos, their interactive shows, their reviews, their personality, how they interact with you in person or in events, or their character. I think it will be a good conversation starter, I think, and I think, and give out audience an opportunity to see who else is bringing us info on paintball to strengthen networks. Yeah. Hope mine gets picked as a question. Keep up the good work, guys. Well, he said for next week, so let's leave that on the docket we'll for next that for week. for next week. That was yeah. a pretty good question, though. So, so far, we've got answers of autococker, microfibers. Airboy doesn't on, understand. The one on the right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Airboy, you have to answer. We're going to... Dustin, no, that's that's his answer. Oh, he doesn't, he doesn't understand. understand. <coughs> oh, okay, very good. What is a fresh squeegee? That's right. fine. Thank you, Airboy. <laughs> very good. So what? Okay, we're, speedball. Speed there we ball. go. <laughs> So, again, the premise for those of you that are listening at home, we are going to ask a question in a moment. But before we do that, we're going to pre-answer the question and see who gets the closest to the actual question. Fisher22 says Empire. That's close. Mm. What do you mean it's close? How do you know? Do you have well, a question, question picked out already? Just to ask. Uh, no, but oh, we haven't we asked have the question answer. yet. We haven't answered the question yet. Okay, let's answer. We'll answer our question. Okay, you, you go first. I, will, I would like to go last this week. Um, I was listening to the podcast this weekend. I heard this segment, and I actually had an answer. I'm trying to remember what it was because I thought it was a clever one. <laughs> of course, I've I lost it. Now. I wrote, I wrote five answers down, and they're in the car. <laughs> yeah. All right, Joe, you're up. Epic uh, failure. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um, okay. Okay. I I will I will say that I wear a shema to offers the best protection. I'm going to say you don't need to lube and oil your gun every single week. Um, just do what the manufacturer suggests and, and, and maybe just do an external wipe down. I'm going to say save your money. Buy the Resurrection Auto Cocker because it comes with a barrel kit as well. Hmm. Okay. Two hits in the chat says liquor and whores. I don't think that's the right answer, Somebody's but I haven't heard the question yet. Voice. Guest 643 says slick. Make sure you wear a barrel condom if you're liquor and whores. <laughs> <Or> sleek lube. <laughs> And um, no comprende, <clears throat> Carlos. Psycho Bear says always use lube on your gun. Uh, Dustin Slayer says the answer is yes. Bob Long is crazy. So let's hear what's what's, what's the, question, the question, Dusty? All right, Xavier Schultz writes in. I have a hard time picking out good starting equipment for the game. I already have a oh. marker in mind and own one pod <laughs> that was given to me and a JT full head paintball helmet. I'm looking to go cheap. What do you guys suggest? Oh, boom! No, that no. just happened. He just said <laughs> that just happened. He just said he wants to go cheap. We're talking like and fifty bucks. And I said, bucks. save your money. <laughs> yes, you did. Yeah. Get the Resurrection Auto Talker. All right. For the first time on this crazy show, we actually got an answer correct, and I will give you okay, point so number one. Now, on, in the forum, who who was? I don't think anybody got no close. one. No, no, Empire. Cl- no, cl- no, no clue. One nineteen said Auto Cocker. Oh, or oh, microfibers. Man, Airboy says, I don't understand. But microfiber is not going to help you sling paint downfield. That's true. Yeah. You, you could use I would it have, as an old is there anyone be, Is there anyone below that? No. <laughs> no clue looks like a winner. No clue, whoever you are. We don't know because <laughs> we have no clue. Um, you are the winner <laughs> of the free entry to Trek Wars at Flag Raiders Paintball. Very good. So you'll have to contact somebody. Contact uh, Steve in our marketing department. Steve. Show it behind the bunker. No, <laughs> yes, we said that. No clue. 119. Well, Zuby's not going to win. Yeah. <laughs> All right, guys. So this has been Behind the Bunker. I appreciate you guys listening to our podcast uh, via Podomatic or iTunes, or if you're watching us live on a Monday night. Uh, thank you very much. Thank you to our sponsors, uh, Empire and JT, DLX, the manufacturers of Lux, Tipman and GI, AirUps Bunker Systems, Valken, Patchworks and Fly Graders. Um, also, there's something in the works. We might see a new sponsor on that spot maybe as early as next week. Oh, mm. Sponsor with answer. Stay tuned for that <laughs> announcement. Um, Eric Angler. No, Angle after what Customs. we did for Angel, you won't see Angel sponsoring our program no. for a while. Um, so thank you very much for joining us, guys. We do, we do really appreciate it. Thank you, Josh, for being in the podcast. No, thank you, Todd. And thank you for uh, taking home the uh, <laughs> the at home version of the show for yes. winning. Yeah, buddy. Yeah, nice, <laughs> Joe. Thank you very much for having me and all your submissions. And I'd like to give a shout out to my friend Ying in Georgia who listens to this on his um, podcast. 
Nice. Now, here's a question. We recently yes. had a baby. Last He's week, a baby. last week at the end of the podcast, Joe left here and uh, had to trek for five hours in his vehicle to to, to uh, head head to do some errands. How many podcasts did you listen to? I listened to one or two. Okay. <laughs> So if you have five hours to kill and nothing better to do, and listen you finally break down and <laughs> listen to one or two podcasts, yeah, very He's good. Listen to other stuff. Dustin Schnitzelholst. Yeah. Yeah. It's nice to have you back on the program. Thanks. Nice to be here. Next week, we'll get you set up so your research department uh, computer works. Yeah, and hopefully I won't be sick anymore. Yep. Um, yep, buddy. Seb. Hello. Bonjour. Seb. Joe, <laughs> Seb, Seb, Todd, Seb. Thank, Todd. You, thank you for being. How did the show sound tonight? Uh, okay, except for Dusty. We needed better talent, is what you're saying. Oh, we need hey. to. We need to. In, we need to implant the microphone into Dusty's mouth. Hey, I'm not the one that's supposed to set the sound stuff up. <laughs> Dustin, I just, I want to, I just want to put this out there. I spent a decent amount of money on my car audio. To get the purest possible sound again. I'm not one of those, you know, thumping basses. I got two tens of subs in the back of my car. Not one of those guys. The system. I like to listen to some high quality audio. Your ability (laughs) to make my speakers pop on the podcast. Wow. (laughs) Unreal. Like popping and screeching because I swear that microphone was somewhere near the back of your tonsils. (laughs) Whoa. Um, I'm not sure how Todd is in the chat right now. There's a Todd guest in the chat. He says, if you haven't done a shout out for Fernando Rios, uh, congrats him on his new baby daughter. Well, there you go. There's a, there's a shout out for him and his new baby daughter. Um, Matt, once you take uh, the microphone out of Dusty's mouth, make sure we sanitize it for next week in case someone else needs it. Well, that's not my department. <laughs> Maintenance staff. Yeah. And I forgot to ask you, Matt, how's the numbers since we were running that camera? Uh, maxed out at like 55 to the... Yeah, Good. nothing major. Good. Awesome. So uh, we have a new camera and a new uh, system. That's great. Next week, hopefully, we'll have a new audio system. If Seb uh, gets off his butt and gets, it, gets it in. Go. <laughs> Very Ding. good. Awesome, guys. Anyone have anything else to say before we head out? Go play Titanfall when you're out playing paintball. Send us your stuff. Only on BC. Go spend up. Very good. Thanks, guys, for watching. We will see you next week. Amazing. Oh,